I would always imagine, what if I was diving straight onto a shark in that blue? Sharks. We're familiar with them from Shark Week. Watching TV, movies like Jaws, they can be quite intimidating and predators of the sea. They've been around longer on this planet than humans. They're very capable and intimidating hunters of the sea. But we're not going to let fear hold us back from an adventure of life. Today, I'm diving in to the truth about diving with sharks. Join me as we discover the secrets of these magnificent creatures and demystify their legends. We've all grown up learning that sharks are something of a creature to be feared. Whether it be Jaws or Aquaman, usually sharks are shown as intimidating and feared creatures in almost every single place where we see them. And sometimes for rightful reasons, they are predators and certainly capable of doing terrible things to people. And I'm no different than anyone else. I grew up also fearing sharks. When I first got into scuba diving, I could have swore when I was getting my SSI open water search, I, I asked if we were going to be diving with sharks or do, sharks near me near. I was always concerned. What if there's sharks? <laughs> I swear through the initial number of dives, I was always keeping my eye out, looking left or looking right, wondering what's on the blue and just waiting to see a shark just come straight at me. And for the longest time, whenever I was on a boat diving into the water, I would always imagine what if I was diving straight onto a shark in that blue? You never know. Funny enough, it eventually did happen and I just dove straight into a shark. But let me tell you, I freaked that shark out. I've never seen a shark swim so fast, but as soon as he saw us, he just darted away as fast as he could. Now, it's important to realize people are really the apex predators of the sea and we are quite scary to them. I am sure you've heard the stories of how we fish them for their shark fins. Fishermen kill them because they're being nuisances, tearing their nets, and disturbing their fishing operations. And they are generally just having less food to eat due to mass commercial fishing in general. With that said, if that makes one or two sharks a little bit grumpy on the ocean, it's hard to say. Sharks are quite sophisticated creatures and they've been around for a very long time and I don't think they're going anywhere but their numbers are definitely dwindling from the humans encroaching onto their territory. So ultimately, the big bad shark is often misrepresented. Don't get me wrong, they are still predators but when they see human, they see something even more fearful than them and they will usually keep their distance. But every shark is different, it has different history. It may recognize people as being something that killed all their friends. It may recognize you as being something that's even more intimidated by it and it may see that as an opportunity. They are still hungry and they eat meat and they will take the opportunity if they see it for sure. But interestingly enough, when sharks see scuba divers, they will be curious and they will keep your distance and you usually have nothing to be afraid of. In fact, shark attacks on scuba divers is extremely rare. It is more frequent for sharks to attack something on the surface when they can't easily identify it, and often those are biting and release. You see, sharks are actually quite timid. Because they don't have medical care or hospitals to go to if they get wounded, they are super efficient. They will attack nothing that they think can give them a wound or injure them unless they are super desperate. And so often they see these things, scuba divers with all these bubbles and this gear and tank and often will definitely be freaked out about it. And so they will not identify you as part of their normal food chain and they will keep their distance, allowing you to enjoy their environment and admire the shark because they are beautiful creatures. And what's most important is most sharks are not even going to be aggressive to you unless you are harassing the shark or appearing super defensive. With that said, there are different types of sharks that I am most concerned with when I have identified a shark and those are bull sharks, tiger sharks, and oceanic white fin. Other than that, there are big sharks like great whites, there are a lot of other oceanic sharks that could be aggressive. More often than not, you don't need to worry about those sharks. You won't see them enough and they usually won't stop to be curious enough to divers for you to even be concerned with. And when you're in reefs, 
or close to the shore, you often will see much smaller sharks that prey on the smaller reef fish that are close to the shore. These are not the big sharks you see in open ocean, and they are often small enough that your size alone will be intimidating to them and they will never even consider you as potential prey because of your size alone. And one remarkable thing that we learned when we were in Maldives at a tiger shark research station in Fuvamula was that a loss of reef sharks and maybe just sharks in general are one of the leading indicators of a dying coral reef. Because after the sharks die, often a lot of the ecosystem goes out of whack and eventually algae starts blooming on the coral and eventually decaying and killing all the coral. So I often consider sharks not the grim reapers of the ocean, but more of the gardeners of the sea. They are often so lazy, they are very efficient and will generally attack things that they have identified as sick or dying. They generally will not go after healthy fish, but old fish or fish that have abnormalities. And what's even more remarkable is in Palau, they have this fish mating season where bumper head parrotfish will come and spawn with each other. And the sharks are just so kind to wait until the female and male have basically laid their eggs and then they will go and gobble up all the adults because they seem to be aware that they need to have offspring for this ecosystem to continue. So they wait for that life cycle to complete and that's remarkable. So if anything, sharks are more of the enforcers to make sure that if anything is getting too weak for the ecosystem, they will balance it out. Further, as mentioned, there's only the three that I mentioned that I'm generally concerned with and unless you're in the blue of the ocean with the oceanic sharks that you might see, you probably will never see them, honestly. But aside from the three that I mentioned and some of the oceanic sharks that are really rare and hard to see, you really don't have to worry about most sharks. They are so small that they will never even identify you as prey. You can turn your back to it and look like a complete doofus and it'll just completely ignore you. It might wonder like, what is this thing doing? But it definitely won't see you as prey. Big enough shark might be feeling a little bit different. So one of the biggest things that helped me start diving with sharks was just seeing more sharks. Going back to when I started in my fear of sharks, it quickly diminished as I started seeing one reef shark, two reef sharks, many reef sharks, and then I started wanting to follow them around. And of course, they're very timid. They will swim away from you. So you then have to start exploring ways to get close to them, take better pictures of them, to see them and try to find some more rare sharks, start finding those oceanic, start getting close to tigers and bull sharks. And you don't have to do all that stuff, honestly. But you will find the more sharks you're around, the less scared you are. And you'll start trying to go and find all these harder to see sharks and seeing how magnificent they are. And understanding them and learning about them opens a whole wide array of things to explore and seeing just how intelligent sharks really can be. In the silent world beneath the waves, every movement matters. Understanding shark behavior can mean the difference between fear and fascination. The more I see sharks, the more I start recognizing when they're generally curious and want to understand more of what you are versus when they're annoyed, swim away, or when they're becoming agitated or defensive over their territory. These are important things that you will have to be able to recognize when you start seeing sharks. For one, it is often normal to find sharks in current. In order to keep breathing, you need to keep moving. Although there are some who can lay on the bottom for some period of time, to my understanding, they do so by holding their breath. But most sharks will be comfortable when they're moving in a gentle pace. And so you'll always be seeing them meander through the reef rocks or wherever you're at and they will generally go find currents and hang out in those areas because they really like the current zones and they, and they will almost appear like they're hovering so they will go and swim in those areas for some period of time and so if you want to see sharks you got to go do the current diving a really cool way i remember being able to see sharks with current is using a reef hook. In some places like Palau, it's very common to basically go underneath a wall and right where the current is 
going right over the wall, it's, it's really ripping. It's, it's a really good current. And so that's where the sharks are hanging out, right on that, that top of the wall where, where the current is most intense. And so for you to hang out there, probably not, it's not gonna be possible. It's gonna be too, you're gonna be holding on to reef or rocks and, it, and it's not gonna work. That's why they use reef hooks. So right when you're going on top of the wall and going right over it, you'll turn around really quickly, find a rock, of course not coral, find a rock and put this hook in and then inflate your BCD and basically float there like a balloon. And so it's really quite nice for photographers with their big old cameras to be able to just kind of sit there and get really close to the sharks and take pictures. And the sharks, if you're there long enough, they'll start getting curious and get closer and closer. Not because they're thinking your food, but because they're curious. Generally, when a shark or any predator is approaching you slowly and cautiously, it's because it's intimidated by you. It's not thinking your prey. If a shark looks like it's just coming at you, like it just doesn't care, and it's totally not intimidated by you at all, this is usually much bigger of a concern. Another thing to take note of is sharks generally do not bite with their eyes open. Their eyes are super sensitive. It, some sharks have this capability of sucking their eyeball into their head, which is kind of interesting. While most sharks have this like super hard second eyelid that will close. And so even if you sit there trying to poke at it, is you're gonna be kind of wasting your time. But the eyelid is generally fairly protected. And so if a shark closes its eyes for an extended period of time and is coming at you, that means it's coming in for a bite. So what I mean to say by all this is if a shark is keeping its distance and being fairly intimidated, it generally is defensive and not seeing you as prey. And so this is an important distinction. Usually predators who just come straight at you is because they they know what people are and they they don't like you and they are ready to attack and so if a shark is charging you with its eyes closed you have to prepare yourself and you don't have that much time for an attack but in most cases 99.999 percent of the time probably you don't need to worry about this thing sharks are often very intimidated and they will keep your distance and you want them to get close so that you can observe them better. and as soon as you start approaching their defensive zone they'll generally just leave however we talked about sharks that are not intimidated by humans at all. Sometimes sharks that are intimidated will start displaying territorial and defensive behavior. This is different than aggressive behavior of sharks that think you are prey, because when they think you're prey, they're not intimidated at all. They just are gonna go straight in for the kill. Defensive sharks generally may not see you as food, but they might see you as a threat to your territory, Maybe they just don't want you being there. They think that you're destroying the thing that they hold sacred. It's hard to say, really, but they don't want you there. And so these sharks will generally start showing some signs of agitation. And I've seen this before myself, where we were diving in Fiji and there was numerous white and black reef tip sharks and maybe one oceanic black tip and then an oceanic white tip entered the scene and you can see that this shark was getting really agitated because it was zigzagging, it was moving around rapidly, and it was showing signs of defensive behavior. And this is usually a sign that it's probably good for you to start making your exit. Keeping focus on the shark, because it was hard to tell if we were the ones agitating it or it was the other sharks, but other sharks also started leaving the area too, and so this is a good sign. This shark is not in a good state, so Chanic White Tips are alone are pretty intimidating sharks, so I'm gonna leave that thing alone. And ultimately, we did start leaving and it just went back into the blue. So if you do see a shark starting to move rapidly, zigzagging and, and showing quick movements, this is a good sign that it is becoming defensive and you should keep your eyes on it while leaving the area as slowly as possible. Ultimately, sharks are not just mindless serial killers of the ocean. They don't murder things recklessly. They will pick fights strategically and effectively because they have to or because they're extremely hungry. Now, it's important to note that those extremely hungry sharks that see you as prey right off the bat are so rare and uncommon. It's a statistic within a statistic that we probably can't even look at. 
how many sharks have just wildly just approached from the blue and attacked a person. I don't think we have that number or data point anywhere, but that is so rare and uncommon, I wouldn't be too worried about it. The more likely thing is a shark's going to start becoming defensive over its territory and start showing that agitation. And when it's defensive, it's not trying to eat you, it's probably just trying to bite you and make, make you go away. Maybe it's gonna kill you because it just wants, it wants it gone. It just wants it out of it, to be honest. And so if you kind of show you're leaving the area, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm out of here, usually it'll, it'll be okay with that. It's gonna see that and it doesn't want to be hurt. It doesn't want you to punch it. it and it's, it's still intimidated by you. These are signs of intimidation, but it is starting to show you that it does not want you in its presence. And so observing those signs and trying to leave is an important way of making an exit. Further, sharks see your eyes. They know which way you're looking. And they generally like to attack things when they are looking at them. And so they're kind of stealthy, kind of like cats. And they like to go for the bite when they have half of least resistance. And so if you're not looking at it, it sees that as an opportunity. So keeping your eyes straight on it, even if it's circling you, is very important because you're not going to give it that opportunity to get behind you and it's going to see that and recognize it and and so it gives you the opportunity to keep backing out of there another thing to keep in mind is sharks generally will not bite your torso they will go for a limb and so keeping your arms tucked in and your legs fairly close is important if it sees your arms flapping around or your legs spread out you might see that as an opportunity and a weak spot for it to go in for a bite. And one cool and unique thing about sharks is because they close your eyes when they're going in for a bite, they need some way to sense where you're at. And so they can actually sense your electricity. Usually to sense your electricity, they need to be very close to you. And by close, I'm talking maybe like four to six feet away. And so sometimes curious sharks will just approach you very slowly because they want to check out your electrical field. And this isn't something to be intimidated from alone. However, if they see and feel your your heart is racing, they see this kind of as a, as a form of excitement. Like there's something afraid of me. That kind of gives them, it probably give you an energy rush if you're a predator hunting something. Like honestly, as a predator, this is a good sign that you have a keen advantage over your prey. And so this is usually a sign that it might take advantage of. So trying to stay calm. Remember, it can sense your fear, literally. <laughs> and so staying calm in the situation and trying not to let the, the shark intimidate you is very important. And again, this is only for bigger sharks. The reef sharks are not going to take advantage of you. They are going to always be afraid of you. So, so keep that in mind. Ultimately, respectful interaction can help mitigate the shark danger during dive. Always remain calm and non-threatening to the sharks. If you are seeing signs of that defensive and agitated behavior, remember the tips I gave and try to leave the scene while keeping the shark in front of you. As I continue to navigate the depths, I realized that knowledge and preparation were the most important things to be able to enjoy my experiences around sharks. I remember earlier on when I started diving with sharks and getting more comfortable with them. There's one time I was alone and I knew this would probably wasn't right, but there's a good size reef shark and it was circling me and it circled me maybe like 10 times. It was a very unique experience and it's never happened to me again. It kept getting closer and closer with each circle. And at the time, this is before I did a lot of research into sharks, so I was getting a little bit intimidated. And I think ultimately, it was trying to feel that electrical field. I stayed horizontal for maybe about four to five of its turns and eventually went vertical because I felt, okay, he's getting a little close. Maybe if I go vertical, I will be a little bit more intimidating to him. And that, that did make him keep his distance. He did not get closer after that. It circled me maybe five more times and I started kind of moving out of the area as well. And then he eventually went away. It's really hard to say exactly what his intentions were, but I can feel most positive that it had no intent to hurt me. It was only of genuine curiosity. And after that experience, I recognize sharks are quite magnificent creatures 
and something to be respected and I've gone a lot of scuba dives to see it's much more intimidating sharks from tiger sharks to bull sharks and oceanic white tail. So even the most aggressive and intimidating sharks in the ocean can still be observed and seen quite normally and without fear. As long as you respect your space and you recognize those signs when it's time to get out of it. I once had a dive master joke with me that saying if a tiger shark comes we're all going to just inflate our BCD to the max and see if we can propel ourselves straight from the deep and see if we can jump right onto the boat with the tiger shark following right behind. Of course, this is a joke, but it really goes to show that even people who work for a living diving all the time have a, an immense respect for these big animals of the sea, and you should too. When you're around those intimidating sharks, it's important to make sure you are with a dive buddy or with your group. Stay grouped together. More humans around each other will seem more intimidating to even the biggest sharks. Those appendages can seem like good openings for a shark if it's going to go for a bite at all. And so keeping those appendages in and tucked is important. Further, going vertical, as I mentioned in my story, can help because honestly, most fish and sharks will be horizontal. So when they see something going vertical, it's even more foreign to them. It's like a bear starting to stand up. It's showing you're becoming defensive. And often it will see that as a sign that maybe it should reconsider its approach as well. Also, never turn your back to a shark. I mentioned it earlier, it creates an opening and a shark will definitely see your back turned to it as an opening for an opportunity. And remember, stay calm. It can sense your fear. And so trying to keep calm is very important. A bite, even a small bite, can be very fatal in the ocean because your blood cannot harden or coagulate and stop the bleeding. The only way is to get out as fast as possible. So in such situations, you do have an injury and you're bleeding out fairly quickly, it's probably better to just turn, inflate your BCD and take your chances, pop to the top. You're probably going to get decompression sickness, but it's better than bleeding out and dying. You have a better chance of surviving decompression sickness if you can get help quickly. Of course, that's an emergency procedure, and I hope that you're never in a situation that you have to make that decision. One thing to take note of is if you are in a situation where a shark has become aggressive or is approaching you and you're ready for a bite, the best thing you can do is prepare to bob it right on the nose. It has to open its mouth to approach you. If you keep your eyes on where its mouth is and its nose is, you can push the nose up hard in such a way that it will really, really hurt the shark. Because you see, its electrical ampules, as they're called, are in their nose, and this allows you to sense your electricity, but the area is also super hypersensitive. And so pushing hard against it will stun the shark in an immense amount of pain and really make it think, hey, I, I don't like this at all, I'm out of here. Because I haven't tried this myself and I hope I never have to, but I've seen videos where the shark is hit on the nose and it just sits there almost stunned for a period of time. You can also gently nudge its nose away, but in a pinch, if you hit that nose hard, it will definitely make that shark reconsider. And honestly, it's not going to permanently wound or injure the shark. It will hurt like hell though. I've heard some divers tell me that they have, they always carry a knife as preparation for a shark attack. And honestly, I wouldn't even mess with the knife because it's just going to distract you. If a shark is really going for a bite, you're not gonna have much time. The one thing you can focus on is where the mouth is and where the nose is and bopping that nose as hard as you can. That's the only thing you should focus on. Of course, this is really for extreme circumstances that most everyone will not have to worry about. And I hope I never have to, and I hope you never have to. 
by maintaining situational awareness and by trying to observe those agitation and defensive behaviors and getting out of there before it really results to an attack, you can avoid most situations. And you too can enjoy seeing these sharks. They are really amazing to see and quite enjoyable to watch. I've even seen videos of some people in like the Bahamas who are shark whispers and can even approach sharks in such a way that the sharks recognize them regardless of what wetsuit they're wearing and know who they are and allow the diver to pet them. Now I would never recommend trying to pet a shark but it's kind of extraordinary. The sharks have this kind of emotional intelligence and can start befriending humans in such a manner. So remember, sharks are much more intelligent and sophisticated than we have always perceived them to be as mindless killing machines. They are something to be respected. And as long as you show them that respect, and that space, I know you will enjoy diving with sharks too and have some incredible dives throughout the world enjoying these magnificent creatures of the ocean. Fear is a crazy thing. Today we talked about sharks and how they can stimulate the deepest fears in us. And I hope by the end of this, you feel you understand sharks a lot more. But there's a lot more unknown things that keep scuba divers at bay and getting that heart rate pumping with that feeling of fear. So I have a perfect video for you to watch next and I will debunk and help work you through a lot of those fears that divers face. Check out this video next and conquer your fears.